All right, looks like we're redirecting in the right direction. There it comes. All right, looks like we're up and running. Let's see if we got sound even. Do we have sound? Yeah, it looks like we have sound and everything. We have recording on, so we are ready to go. Good evening. Happy Monday. I'm your lawyer, Patrick McGee, and I am your best friend at your worst time. And welcome to Monday Update, which ends up being sometimes Tuesday Update. We'll call it Weekly Update. There you go. That works. Okay, in big legal news today, if you didn't know it already, and I'm sure you've been sitting on pins and needles for this forever. The Supreme Court for the first time ever had live oral argument. I checked in there to see what it looked like and it doesn't look like anything because it's only video, but it is live and it is recorded. And this is the first time that anybody has, well, besides those outside the courthouse, have been able to listen to the oral argument as it goes on live. And this particular case was a case of booking.com suing for trademark infringement because they, I only listened to a very little bit, I promise. Uh, booking.com suing on trademark and mark infringement because they said there's some confusion between booking.com, hotel booking.com, airplane booking.com or some stuff like that. Anyway, it was a boring civil case. Uh, one thing about those cases, I know the lawyers that do that trademark stuff and argue before the Supreme Court are probably the smartest lawyers around, but that type of law to me is absolutely boring. Um, civil law, just, you know, I prefer to practice the law I practice, the family law and the criminal law and the personal injury because it affects people's lives. I mean, to some extent, I guess that affects people's lives. It affects the CEOs of the companies and all that, and they come down to some consumer issues, but overall, just my opinion, I think that law is boring. So if you want to check in with the Supreme Court, you want to be one of the first to listen to them, you can catch them on C-SPAN. They're having another argument tomorrow morning in another civil case, which I didn't bother to read further because civil cases do not interest me all that much. Moving on, nothing new in court news for South Florida. I checked Dave Broward in Palm Beach County just before I got on this morning or this afternoon and nothing real new is going on. The same orders are posted up that have been posted up for the last week or so. So nothing new there. If you haven't heard already, Dave Broward and Palm Beach County are excluded from the state opening plan. So the rest of the state is opening up on a, what they call a phase one opening, whatever that is. And Miami-Dade is, Miami-Dade Broward and Palm Beach are doing their own things as they usually let us do here in South Florida. But the only thing in that that affects me is the opening of boat ramps. They did open the boat ramps last weekend in Miami-Dade County and check out some of this craziness going on. This is, and if you not know what I'm talking about, if you, if you catch my YouTube live, I can put pictures up on the screen and share my screen. So that's what I'm doing over on YouTube. So if you want to see the pictures that I'm throwing up, you'll have to go in and check over on YouTube. But this is the line of boats to get in Black Point Marina down south. This is the landfill over here on the left. This is 248th Street where you see all these boats marked up and they are just crazy long. That line is about a mile long to get into the marina and then you have to go from the gate to the boat ramp. We'll bring you another one here. This is the same area. This is looking down going into the, uh, into the canal area. I guess people are putting their boats in and bringing them alongside here to the canal to get in them once they park their trailers. But this is 248th Street and the entrance to the marina is way over here on the right still. There used to be a pretty great bar right there where you see that big white spot, that uh, the pirate spot back in the 80s. That was, that was a pretty kicking place. But once again, that is the line to get to the boat ramp at Black Point Marina. 
Go on to the next one here, another Black Point Marina. This is the other end of the line, the western end of the line at 97th Avenue by the dump. And that's about a mile solid full of boats and cars to get in. Got the police out there everywhere directing traffic. And it's just going crazy out there. And I think this one was on Sunday. I think we got one more. And this is just another look at the line. This area is real popular for bicycles, as you can see. They're running two-way traffic here in one lane. But that is the line to get in just to launch your boat. And people were telling me that it was taking four hours to get through that line. And that's, that's some craziness right there. Way crazy, crazy, crazy. All right, so that's the boat ramp situation. I hear that Pelican Harbor is pretty much the same way, although the line is not as long, but I heard that Hollover Park was pretty much vacant all day Saturday and most of the day Sunday. So if you're in South Florida, you wanna take your boat out, you might wanna go over to, Hol to Hollover Park and put it in there and uh, head out from that way. In other news, I know you've been wondering, I've been wondering too, what happens to these people that get arrested for violating the emergency orders? Well, this weekend I found out there was a case in Pinellas County where a guy gets arrested for violating the emergency order. And I pulled the arrest report. I went online, pulled the arrest report. This occurred on April 16th at 6, 10 PM. Apparently this guy owns a business called Kitchen Table Games in St. Petersburg which is just across the bay from Tampa in central, well, West Central Florida. So Pinellas County Sheriff's Office goes out to investigate this kitchen table game place. I don't know, I don't know if it's an arcade or what. And they cite him with violation of the emergency order, County Resolution 20-23 and County Code 34-27, whatever that means, that's the enabling codes. Pinellas County Sheriff's Office responded to a business in reference to tips somebody was a tipping them off somebody's got some enemies of a business being open in defiance of the emergency order on four separate occasions on 4 3 4 7 4 10 and 4 16. on each contact was made with the defendant and advised that he was and the defendant by advised that he was an essential business and would and these guys cannot write on each contact the defendant advised that he was an essential business and would was argumentative and uncooperative. A compliance check was conducted at the business on today's date, which was the 16th, the date they arrested, and the defendant was once again conducting curbside pickups at the business. None of the employees were even attempting to comply with CDC social distancing guidelines. Contact was once again made with the defendant, and he again insisted that he was an essential business per the emergency orders. He was again argumentative and uncooperative, refused to close the business. So they arrested him. And it looks like they have a booking officer listed on here. And I'm not familiar with Pinellas's arrest affidavit, but it looks like they took him to the county jail. Anyway, when the state reviewed the case, the state attorney's office reviewed the case and the state attorney's office is the one who decides in Florida what charges were filed, if any charges were filed. The state attorney's office goes, no, we're not filing these. And they drop the case. They don't, they don't dismiss it. They just drop it flat out before arraignment within days of the arrest. So that's what's happening with those types of cases, I guess, in at least Pinellas County. As far as down here, the only thing I've heard, I heard of a couple cases over the weekend where people were arrested before the beach is open. People were arrested for trespassing on the beach. And the police officers that were arrested were county officers. They weren't charging them under the state trespassing statute. They were charging them under a, um, a zoning violation, a trespass on the beach zoning violation, basically trespassing when the beach is closed. And that's interesting compared to the Pinellas County case, which is charged as a criminal case, because in criminal cases, you have a right to a jury trial. When you're charged with a zoning violation, you have a right to appeal to a hearing officer where there is no trial. There isn't even a judge, it's an officer. 
the magistrate, not even a magistrate. It's an attorney that's hired by the county to hear cases against the county. And as we both know, as we all know, the county usually wins on their zoning violation cases. Anyway, that's all I have. That's all the fun and exciting news from Florida this week. If anything comes up, I'll certainly bring it up on an immediate intermediate update or on Wednesday. And this Wednesday, I'll be on Law and the Life Live at 6 p.m. in the evening. We will be discuss, discussing the difference, how it interacts, and the correlation between self-defense and stand your ground law. From the video I did last week on the police shooting in the guy's house, I got a buttload of questions about how self-defense and stand your ground interact together and how they interplay together in a criminal as well as a civil case. So I'll discuss that. I'm also getting, strangely, a bunch of questions since that video about people wanting to know how to buy guns and what the uh, rules are for buying guns. So I'll discuss that briefly also. Apparently a bunch of people are wanting to run out and buy guns. So I'll discuss that briefly also. I usually get those questions because, you know, I was a former police officer and I am a firearms instructor. So I do get questions about what kind of gun to buy, you know, where should I go to buy a gun? But now people are seem to be interested in what the laws are regarding gun sales and that type of stuff. Um, that's where we sit on um, some, I guess, rumor, rumor control, words around the lawyer circle is that courts are going to be in Dade County anyway. I'm hearing just, and it's just a rumor, there's nothing confer, confirmed, that the courts will start having people come in for personal appearances. Some are saying the middle of May and some are saying the end of May, but I don't know for sure and nothing's confirmed and none of that came from courthouse circles. That's just the word from the lawyers that I've been talking to. And I will let you know as soon as they do open. So that's it. That's it for South Florida News. Once again, thanks for all the questions on the last video. That was one of the highest on a weekly period, one of the highest watched videos I've had. Uh, people seemed really interested in it. I got a lot of uh, emails and DMs about looking into other cases. So if you have any type of cold case or any type of criminal case or homicide case that you would like me to review and give you some input or give you a, I don't know what you would call it, a re, I guess it's a review, a review as a lawyer and former homicide detective, I'll be happy to do that. It seemed to be real interesting for everybody. Um, as always, you can DM me or email me with any questions you may have on the three areas of law that I practice specific to Florida. I don't practice anywhere but Florida. And that is criminal law, family law, and personal injury. You can contact me via email, Patrick at PJM Lawyer, or you can get me DM on any of the platforms on Facebook. I um, have a group that's called Ask a Florida Divorce Lawyer. It's a private group. If you want to join that, you join, I approve you. We ask a lot of questions about family law and go over a lot of family law content there. I am also on Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok as the Magic City Lawyer. You can also find me on Facebook on my law office page, the law offices of Patrick McGeehan, and you can find me on LinkedIn on Patrick McGeehan. And I get, I check those regularly, usually at least once or twice a day, and I get a lot of questions that come in from there as well as the email. And YouTube, I am your, what is it, your South Florida lawyer, Patrick McGeehan, on YouTube. Please join and subscribe to my YouTube channel hit the subscribe button down below. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the little bell also so you're notified when new videos come out. Those videos seem to generate a lot of questions about the videos for further explanation, which from last week, we're gonna follow up this Wednesday. Once again, join me Wednesday at 6 p.m. for Law and the Life Live. I'll be right here. I'll be on all the same platforms. I'll be on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube Live. But if you want to see screen shares, you'll have to watch on YouTube because that's the only place I can screen share with the setup that I have. So let me look through, see if we have any questions running around. Looks good there. Let's go over to the TikTok. Like I said, it's never a good idea to talk to cops. What do you get out of giving us free legal advice? 
I like to share personally. I think, I think that everybody has a unique skill and talent, no matter what that is. And if you have that unique skill and talent, you have a moral obligation to share it with the masses, with especially the people that may need it. So if you're going through, you know, any type of criminal action or family law action, you have a question about it, you can always ask me and I'll freely share that information with you because I think that's what we're supposed to do. I think, you know, if you're a plumber or you're a welder or you have some type of trade skills, you should be on YouTube teaching people how to do plumbing and welding. I think that's the way of giving back and that's what you owe society for what, you know, you've been able to accomplish. At least that's the way I feel, you know. I feel that, you know, I went to law school, I spent all this time in law school, I learned a lot of stuff and I shouldn't keep it to myself. I should spread it and give it to everybody else. And I hope it helps you. Some people say it does and and that's that's why uh, that's why we do it. All right, TD Law 3, if they are going to make an arrest, they are going to do it. Yes, they are. And just keep in mind, in Florida, when they arrest you, if they give you an NTA or a PTA, a notice to appear or a promise to appear, and it's on something that's written as a complaint arrest affidavit, that counts. Although you may be signing your name and released at the scene, that counts as an arrest, as a misdemeanor arrest. And it goes on your record as a misdemeanor arrest. Also, if you're stopped by Fish and Game or FWC, those citations that they issue, a lot of those are criminal statutes and they show up on your criminal history. Like I've had people that get tickets for having a short lobster and they run their criminal history and there's a criminal misdemeanor on there for the FWC violation. So just keep that in mind, just because you're signing and you're not going to the county jail does not mean that you're not actually arrested. For technical purposes, you are being arrested, but you're being released on your own recognizance right there from the scene. So keep that in mind. I mean, hopefully you'll never need that information, but hey, Casey, how are you? Sweet Cine, are you an immigration attorney? I am not, but I have a great one here in Miami. You're welcome user. Lovely Lisa Lisa, how is Florida doing on flattening the curve? I think we're coming down. The last I heard, which was Friday, it, it's working. We have more capacity than we ever had. Thomas White, you know it buddy, you're here all the time. I'm always trying to pay it forward. Harry Thomas, thanks for checking in. Let me check the other platforms and see if I have anybody. I got my Magic City Mel on there. If you guys are interested in photography, get on Instagram and check out Magic City Mel. She takes some amazing pictures. All right, Bob, I see you're in there. Manny, Ace, thanks all you guys for checking in. We're good on YouTube. Looks like we're good on Facebook. Once again, thank you for checking in. Thank you for taking time out of your day to listen to what I have to say. Hopefully something I have to say is beneficial to you. That is my hope anyway. Um, you know, like I said, I think it's my duty to, you know, share the information I have, share the skills that I have. And uh, that's, that's the main reason I get out here and do that. Feel free to ask questions. If you want, hit me up on any of the platforms. I will see you Wednesday. I'm always humbled by the um, by the outpouring of people that come in and join just to listen to me for a few minutes. I'm very honored and very humbled by it. And I will see you Wednesday, 6 p.m. Law and the Life Live. We'll be talking self-defense and stand your ground laws. All right, Jeremy has a question. I just saw that before I end it. Go ahead with your question, Jeremy. We're all sitting here waiting for you, buddy. Just so you know, we're all waiting for Jeremy 8921. Have you ever been to any court auctions? That was Harry asking. Uh, I went, I've been to a couple of tax auctions. I used to be into tax certificates and I've been to a couple of foreclosure, off, off foreclosure auctions to buy properties. All right, here's Jeremy's question, everybody. Everybody ready? 
can officers go into your house without a warrant? Under certain circumstances, there are warrant exceptions, such as like if you're killing somebody inside, they can go in your house to save them. If there's some type of exigent circumstance, they can make it in there. If there's something in, in plain view, any contraband in, contraband in plain view, that's an exception, but houses are different. The residence is different. And that comes under, you know, the, the English common law that a man's home is his castle and it takes more authority, more reasoning, more cause to go into a house than it does anywhere else. For example, like your car, like they could do, there's a lot of exceptions to search in your car, but they cannot go into your house uh, within the curtilage of your house, within your screen porch, anything like that without a lot more authority than uh, what would take to search something else. And usually they do that on a warrant. If it's a major crime, robbery, sexual battery, arson, murder, anything like that, they're gonna get a warrant unless it's an emergency circumstance. So I hope that, uh, hope, wait, he's got a, wait, Jeremy has another question. In plain view, like from outside the door or window, yeah, if they, if they can see something from where anybody can see something, like outside on the sidewalk, they can see you're running a grow house, you know, you're gonna have a problem. All right, Jeremy, enjoyed the question, man. Come up with some other ones. Thanks for taking the time to uh, check in and ask your questions. Always here, to, always here to answer questions if you have any while I'm on. Thanks a bunch, everybody, and I will see you Wednesday, hopefully.